presented by Miller High Life. We start things off with lightweight Gary Boletto and Michael Clark in a 10-round affair. Michael Clark is 29 years of age from Columbus, Ohio, 137 pounds as a pro, 28-2 with 14 knockouts. Of course, Brian and Max referred to the fact that they'll have Vivian Harris in studio later on in the show. Earlier this year, Michael Clark stepped into the ring against Vivian Harris here on ESPN 2's Friday Night Fights, lost a 12-round unanimous decision. And he'll be taking on local prospect, the Tiger, Gary Boletto. He's 27 years of age from Providence, Rhode Island. 5'10", 136 pounds, 25-0-2 with 22 knockouts. Two fights to go on Friday night fights. Stepping up a little bit in class, he took on Mike DiBenedetto. Knocked him out in the ninth round, landing 56% of his power punches. Well, we're getting set for our first bout of the evening between Michael Clark and Gary Boletto. How does this fight unfold? We hear from both men, starting with Boletto. His chin is questionable. Well, all my opponent's chins are questionable, I think. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're looking for a knockout. We're not rushing anything. We're going to box. I see myself hurting clock early and, and stick to my game plan and uh, not, not wild for boxing and uh, hurting him to the body, hurting him to the head. He can't match up to a Mike Clark uh, as far as talent and skills. Uh, he's more of a mechanical type of fighter who hasn't been in there with nobody that's uh, worth mentioning. And I think we're going to surprise everybody on Mike Clark's uh, ESPN2 comeback. It's, it's a huge stepping stone. It's not a stepping stone like a step. It's like trying to jump on a prudential rock. It's a, it's a big jump for him. And uh, I wish him all the best of luck, but I know that he's going to be in for a terrible night. Let's look at tonight's main event here on Friday Night Fights. Gary Boletto, known as a brawler, trying to become more of a boxer. So he's have to be patient in the play. ring. Coach, I want to stick with down the philosophy. Bit, okay? But can a Tiger, which is his nickname, change strikes? Richard Flaherty, the very capable referee, will man the bout. Mash and Tuckett rules will govern our first fight of the evening, and they are as follows. Three knockdown rule, no standing eight count. Fighter cannot be saved with the bell in any round. Accidental foul, they'll go to the scorecards after four. Count them, four rounds are complete. Clark was an accomplished amateur with 150 wins. He was the 1992 National Golden Gloves champion. In fact, he beat Julian Wheeler in the Golden Gloves in 92. Wheeler went on to represent the United States at the Olympic Games. He beat Clark in the Olympic trials. Wheeler fights in our main event. This is definitely a step up for Bellato. He may be tested severely tonight. It all depends on whether or not Clark can get out of the shoot cleanly and get out box Bellato. He is the faster man. Teddy, after the loss to Vivian Harris, in which Clark was dropped twice in the first round, down in the second, and down in the seventh, losing a 12-round decision to Vivian Harris, who won the Winter World title last weekend. He's had two very easy fights against sub-500 competition to try to steady the ship. But as you mentioned, he's still been in against the better guys. He's also in against Leavander Johnson, who fights in our main event against Julian Wheeler. Technical win in five rounds after a clash of heads. And he's been in against Artur Gregorian as well. He has the advantage both in the pros and in the amateurs, as you said, from the two-time national amateur champ. More amateur fights than Bellotto, and with the better opposition in the pros, maybe has better physical skills, definitely as far as speed. Makes for an interesting test and an interesting night for the undefeated Bellotto. Yeah, you know, the people that are backing Boletto are trying to fill a void, a vacuum, with the advanced age of Vinny Paz, and basically his career is, for the most part, over. I mean, there's some more fights left with Vinny Paz and some paydays, but as far as being a New England draw, the people that represent Boletto are trying to work him in and hopefully control this vacuum because there's a very big market in the New England area for a local fighter. Yes, there is. Something that Dana Rosenblatt has yet to capitalize on. Boletto just landed a right hand. That's what he needs to do. He needs to do two out, things. One is to land power. Right, let him out. Slow down Clark. Try to hurt Clark. Not allow Clark to box and use a jab like he's doing there. 
I think it would be a good idea for Paletto to start going to the body along the lines of what I just suggested. Slow down, Clark. Take the legs away. You can see Clark is not only slick. He likes to be slick. Take the legs away. He won't be quite as slick. Hey, you got the other way, too. Come on. Final seconds of round number one. Gary Boletto and Michael Clark. Clark putting his hands together with a combination at the end of the first round. Both guys have had their moments. Presented by Friday Night Bites, presented by Miller High Life. And uh, Teddy, you know, Gary Boletto owns a cafe, likes to serve some bagels with some cream cheese, but he wants to land the hard stuff, the right hand. So far, Clark has made it difficult for Boletto to get his clean shots. How does Boletto get those hard punches in? We touched on it before. First of all, he's got to take the jab away. Anytime you suggest, as you just did, you're fighting a guy who likes to move, he probably has a good jab. Clark does. Take his jab away. Use your jab. And go to the body. Take the movement away. The most telling thing that round might have been the right hand that Boletto landed. Guess what? It didn't hurt Clark. That could be trouble for Boletto. All right. We start round number two. Clark has been stopped once. That by Arthur Gregorian in Germany back in 1999. That's Gary Boletto. Not only is he a boxer, he owns a construction company, a cafe, and a gym. So he's a busy guy. You see the numbers in round number one, and you see Clark had the edge as far as the overall numbers were concerned. And he finished the round strongly. Teddy, so much talk about Boletto and his people trying to get him to be more of a boxer. And, you know, against the Mike De Benedettos, that's one thing. But to be a boxer when you're not naturally a slick boxer against a slick boxer could be a recipe for disaster. He didn't have more than 20 amateur fights, Boletto. It starts early, learning these things. That's exactly where it starts. Not in the locker room, usually not in the late stages. You can make some adjustments, but to actually change the formation of a man from a slugger to a boxer. Not done too often, too easily. The most telling thing that I suggested in between rounds, the last round, was Paletta landed a right hand. The clock was still there. That tells you two possible things. One, that it could be a long night for Boletto, and two, Boletto might have to put a left hook behind that right hand, might have to land two, three. Let him out. Not let depend him out. on one. You know, in that fight against the Benedetto on Friday Night Fights back in March, that was an even fight through eight rounds. But Boletto was able to finish him off in the ninth. I think Boletto has to hurt Clark to win this fight. I don't think he can out punch him. I don't think he can out punch him, him, as I just said. I don't think he's going to out speed him. He's not going to out box him. He needs to hurt Clark. The guy, the way of doing it by getting fortunate, by landing a lucky punch, you have to have a device. You have to have a plan. We're going to find out if Valero has that plan. He's going to have to use that jab to get in. And I believe, as I said the first round, Bob, Boletto should go to the body. Try to take something out of Clark. Take some of his confidence away. Clark's getting more and more confident as the minutes go by. Ask Clark about having a chance to win a decision in Boletto's backyard. And he says, I'm going to win by so convincingly that I can't get out. because he wanted to embarrass Paletta in front of the hometown fans. Well, he's doing a couple of good things. He's staying outside where the quicker hands can show themselves, as he's doing now. And when he gets inside, he ties up. Paletta needs to be free inside, use his strength. Tread lightly, son-in-law. There are more traps lying ahead than in the... Michael Clark and Gary Boletto scheduled for 10 lightweights. Boletto, 25 and 0 with two draws and 22 knockouts. You can take a look at the numbers from round number two. And again, Clark with the edge. He was busier and he landed more. 10 of 24 in the jab category. Teddy, you know, we, we talked about it before. Boletto trying to change from a brawler to a boxer. And this is not the kind of opponent you want to continue the learning process on how to fight, be a boxer again. This is a big step, as we said right from the beginning. 
In some ways, you're going from the monkey bars to Mount Everest. Definitely as far as competition that the Leonard's been in and Clark has been in. And the talent, the pure talent of that competition. Clark has talent. And we know Boletto's not going to have jab Clark, but he must use that jab. Hi guys, let him out. Just stabilize the jab of Clark. Neutralize it a little bit. Well, yeah, through the first two rounds, Boletto has thrown more jabs than Clark, although he has landed only seven of the 59 that he threw. This is where Boletto must do a better job, right there. He must keep his hands free, take advantage of the one advantage he might have in this fight, being a stronger man. He must punch inside and go to that body, I believe. Uppercut on the inside from Clark. He's letting Clark pick his spots. Clark ties up, and then he lets go, and he gets off quick. Then he spins Boletto or ties him up again. That's not an action. That's not just sloppy boxing. That's being controlled by Clark. Intentionally. Clark, he ties up here. That's what Boletto needs to do. Land that right hand. And he landed it over the slow jab or the low jab of Clark. Okay, hey, Boletto needs to make this a brawl. Forget the boxing stuff. He's not going to outbox Clark. He definitely needs to land something big. And I think one of the best ways of doing it, he just showed you before, is with the right hand time. And that's not so much a draw. That's being disciplined enough to let that right hand go at the right time as the jab comes across. You feel here's where he needs to draw. Yes, sir. This is where he needs to keep those hands free, Boletta. And again, go down there. Take some of the gumption away from Clark, some of the confidence away from him. Definitely some of the movement away from Clark by going to that body. Pace picking up here in the third round. That right hand is a key part for Boletto if he's going to stay undefeated. He needs to throw it over the jab. He needs to land it. Underway, round number four. To 10. No knockdowns to this point. Clark controlling the pace for the most part. You see the numbers from round number three. You could make the case though that Boletto was the one that landed the meaningful punches in that third round. Both Teddy and I gave Boletto the third round. There's good news and bad news about that right hander last round. Good news is Boletto was able to land his power punch. The bad news is Clark absorbed it. I said it earlier, if Boletto cannot hurt Clark, it's going to be hard to win the fight. One way maybe he can turn that around a little bit, Boletto, he needs to put something with that right hand. Follow with a left hook. Now you talked about the timed right hands from Boletto. Clark's trying to time his right hand, too. Clark knows what he's doing. You don't fight 160 amateur fights and not know how to fight. Now, this is the key right here, I believe. Right here. Watch your holding, Gary. Hold him. Set. Two. Clock. Not matched yet. We have a ways to go. But set go. to clock. He gets his right. He ties up on the out inside and wins on the outside. He's got what he wants. The letter must find a way to work inside. And a tiger, a tiger for Gary Boletto. Local following, trying to urge on the New England product. So this is where it's important for Boletto to work behind that jab so he doesn't get counted coming in. There, like that. He must use that jab coming in and try to move his head. Clark's doing a good job at distance, just watching. She's getting his punches off, especially that jab. At the right time, he's picking the spots real well. Now there's a little blood coming from somewhere. All right, let him out. Yeah, he's been a pretty good round for Clark. He's controlling the round. Punching when he wants, not punching when he doesn't. And left hand, uppercut on the inside from Clark.
good fourth round for Michael Clark of Columbus, Ohio, wearing the colors of Ohio State. I saw this fool called... Pays off on the offensive side. He makes Boleto miss, fall forward, right hand land. Round number five underway. Stay there. Between Boleto and Clark. Behind the head. Oh, he's behind the head the third time. The clarity warning. Clark for holding. You see the numbers through four rounds in the jab category. The shorter Clark is landing his jabs at about 37%. The taller Boleto at about 12%. I don't think anybody would argue too much that Clark owns the outside so far. If he owns his own on the inside like he's been able to do by tying up. Again, Boletta might not have a zero on his record at the end of the night. Work it out. This is where Boleto must yeah, work, must find a way. All right. Takes a couple things to work inside. One is the desire to do so. Two is judging distance, not smothering yourself, bringing those shoulders back, locating those shoulders, and working. Clark did a good job of staying inside those punches of Boleto. He got caught with one shot. Boleto has go, two offensive go. opportunities go that he holding. must try to exploit. One is on the inside, and then one is when Clark steps back. Boleto must step with him and see if he can nail him. Clark will step back with his hands down. Clark goes to the left, and then a right hand to the off-balance Boleto. Quick, guy, let him out. Nice and easy. Clark setting his punches up, placing his punches well. Goes downstairs, goes upstairs. Good right hand to the body from Clark. And that's where we expected Boleto to be going. And it's been Clark that's been going up and down there. Things keep going this way. A couple of things will happen to Boleto. He will start to swell up possibly. The corner Boleto will have to start using ice, putting end swells up, not wait till that happens. He's taking punches. They're going to have to do some preventive treatment. Get cold things on his face. Also, Boleto could start tiring, both psychologically, mentally, and physically. He's taking a lot of punches. He leaves himself off balance a lot, like right there. And Clark's been able to make him pass. Clark winking to some of his friends and the crowd here at Foxwood. He's in control here, at least according to our score card. Clark outboxing Boleto at the midway point. Gary Boletto and Michael Clark. Bob Hopper, Teddy Atlas ringside. Friday Night Fights presented by Miller High Life. The judges, Don Ackerman from New York, Glenn Feldman from Connecticut, and Donald O'Neill from Florida. Don't wrestle, don't wrestle. I got it. Don't wrestle. Right now, Teddy Clark is fighting a very smart, intelligent fight. It's a tactical fight against the local product and a good tactical time for you to mention judges because you got to start thinking about this part of the fight if it does go to a decision is home cooking Hi, guy, let him out. home Hi. cooking of Boleto fighting in New England going to play into it Look that I noticed earlier it seems to be coming from a cut in the mouth of the letter. Nothing serious. Cuts in the mouth, of course, would not cause a fight usually to be stopped or looked at by a doctor or referee unless it's very severe. The only time that can influence a fight is severe enough where maybe a fighter starts swallowing his blood to a point where it upsets his stomach. I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay. Not only was this a step up in class, but Boleto is fighting a guy who's four better fighters and a guy who has talent, but got very it, difficult it, style for Boleto. He's not the fastest guy in the world. We've talked about it. Depends on hurting you. Walks straight in. Little one-dimensional. 
He's fighting a versatile fighter who's quick, has a good jab, has good movement. Very difficult matchup for Ferrado. So right now it's target practice for Clark. The only thing keeping Valletta in there is his heart and his condition. Always in great shape. He's a tough kid from Providence. I got it, I got it. But he's not keeping himself free on the inside. Part of that might be that he's been broken down a little bit, a little discovered. Yeah, you know what he's doing, Teddy? He's going back to his old style. Trying to pull it out of the fire. And it's about that time in the fight where he needs to maybe do that. Forget about trying to become a slick, stylish boxer. He's got to fight. Oh, yeah, if he's going to win this fight, he's going to have to land a big punch. He's going to have to hurt Clark, change this fight. Clark, though, keeps him at bay with his jab. Still a good round for Clark. Round number six. We start round number seven. Let's take a look at the punches landed by round according to CompuBox. Joe Costelli, Joe Lagavar out to control. And Clark has had a very nice balance, Teddy, with those connect numbers that you're looking at, the 16 and 19. A nice mixture of jabs and power shots as far as the connect is concerned. Not just all jabs. He's landed some very good punches as well. It's about boxing. It's about the sweet size. Science. It's about navigation, controlling your man in the ring. Clark has used all the elements to do that. Hand of the body from Clark. Leto's getting to the point now, and he may be there in the fight where his best chance might be desperation. He just lets his hand start going, what you suggested, the last round. And one of two things will happen then. Either he'll get lucky, fortunate, he'll land, or he'll get more beat up. But the more he gets desperate, the more he'll leave himself wide open. Teddy Boletto has only recorded one knockout past the sixth round. And that was the win against De Benedetto in the ninth. I let him go, Gary. Bob Pop and Teddy Atlas ringside Friday night fights presented by Miller Highlight from Mountain Tucky, Connecticut. Gary Boletto, Michael Clark underway, round number seven, scheduled for ten. Coming up in the main event, Julian Wheeler defends his USBA lightweight crown against Levander Johnson. Plus Brian Kenny and Max Kellerman in the studio. They'll be talking live with Vivian Harris later on in the program. Right hand there from Clark. Clark has controlled this fight, Teddy. It's all Clark. Matter of fact. That might be the best chance for Boletto now, at least in my estimation. What I mean by that is if Clark gets away from the fight, gets a little too cocky, a little arrogant, starts feeling too good, and instead of boxing, starts closing in a little bit too much too soon, maybe Boletto can catch him coming in. Otherwise, it's, it's all Clark. It's, it's very hard to make a case to see Boletto get back in this fight. Teddy, all Boletto is catching is Levin. Clark's not a huge banger, but he's punishing Gary Boletto through almost seven rounds. Getting to the point where the referee's getting closer, looking at the punches that Boletto's starting to take, or has been taking. Again, Boletto off balance, and he eats a combination. And again, on the inside, Boletto allows himself, cooperates with Clark, and is tying up the break. Gary Boletto taking a lot of punishment through seven. All right. Trainer Kurt Reeder, Chuck Sullivan, and Dion Boletto, they said to their young charge, you've got to go to war. You are losing every round. Teddy, we have been losing six of the seven against Michael Clark. And the strength of that one round that third round that we both gave to Boletto was on the strength of two good right hands. So it's possible to be a setup. Although, don't forget, we are in New England. One and that is where Boletto's from. One judge is from Connecticut, one judge is from New York, and one judge is from Florida. But we'll see. But those judges from all, from all different places 
maybe the most relevant thing is they are in New England. Let's take a look at Teddy's scorecard. Teddy has it six rounds to one. We have the same scorecard. Boletto's corner has him losing every round. Boletto eating another right hand as he walks in without a jab, without moving his head, without a jab. One thing we haven't mentioned is that, that elusive ability of Clark. We've talked about the jab, we've talked about the hand speed, we've talked about mixing the punches up, up and down, but his defense has been a big part of this fight. And Teddy, is that wild right hand that Boletto threw there, that's the punch that finished off to Mike Di Benedetto. So you're talking about a different class of fighting. Right, so, a fighter that one point, one point. is skilled and experienced and confident that he can handle his undefeated fighter. Clark has fought fighters that don't have as good a record as Boletto, but he knows they have been better fighters. And that is one of the things that gave him confidence going into this match and taking this match. As we mentioned, the defensive skills of Clark has been a big part for two reasons. One, he's been able, as you said, to avoid the best weapon that Boletto has, the power. He's been able to get away from it. Power means nothing if it can't land. And the other reason the elusiveness has been so important to Clark is he's been able to make Boletto miss like that. He's been able to control him, and he's been able to score very often during the night. Now, Clark told us yesterday that he planned on embarrassing Boletto in front of his family and friends. He's done a pretty good job of it. And he also felt that he would win each round convincingly enough so that the judges could not rob him. Oh, oh right hand. And it hurt Clark. Clark Clark's stepping out. And now Clark has to hold on for dear life. One thing Powell can do, he can pull you out of the place. Cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Clark's trying to hold on. And Boletto allowed himself to be smothered. This could be the difference in a fight tonight. Right here. And Clark survived. Okay, let's take a look at the one punch that may have turned it around. Well, we talked about it earlier. The best chance that Boletto had was to punch on the inside, which he hasn't been doing, and to catch Clark going out. He caught Clark going out. Let's take another look at it. Clark stepping back with his left hand down. The tip of the chin was caught with that right hand of Boletto. Now, the key was what happened or what didn't happen after that. Boletto wasn't able to finish Clark. Clark was able to smother him. That could be the key in the fight and the career of Boletto. Because Clark was on his way to winning that round convincingly, Teddy. He was controlling the round, getting things done, and he got caught with that one punch. That may have swayed things quite a bit. See the numbers from that eighth round. The edge to Clark, but Boletto landed the one on, punch on. that hurt Clark. Clark. Stop, stop, stop. We suggested earlier, over there. the referee is getting some of the ice removed from the ring, but the corner of Clark used to resuscitate him. If your guy's hurt, Teddy, as a trainer, you make sure you leave some ice on the ring mat so that the ref gives you even more time. I don't know that they did that on purpose, but that would be Angelo Dundee-like thinking. Find some time. Pretty smart corner work by boxing guys. That man is Jimbo Espaduli, who knows all the tricks of the trade. He suggested earlier that Clark showed the ability to maybe survive one right hand. The key would be to Boletto land more than just one right hand. Could he put the hook behind it? And finally, Boletto is imposing his will and style on Michael Clark. It was all Clark through seven. Actually, it was all Clark through eight rounds in two minutes and 40 seconds. But to catch up here, Boletto may have to either score a knockout or at least some knockdown to get himself, at least on all cards, closer to Clark. The only loss on Clark's resume, as you see that graphic, fights past eight with Civilian Harris, who is joined Brian Kennedy and Max Kellerman in the studio. And the 
Out, out. One place where out. Clark leaves himself vulnerable is when he steps out. Not only because he goes straight out, but he goes out with his hand down. When he does get caught, as he did the last round with the right hand, he gets caught clean. Once again, you can see him going back with the hand down. It's going to be a matter of whether or not Coletto is with him as he steps back. Clark a little jam. But Clark has stabilized things a little bit, Teddy, here in this round. Yes, he has. A little recharged by that big punch in the last round. His punch out put his effort has been much more intense. Watch Gary, next time we have the hitter, take the point. Let's go. Part of that, of course, being fueled by the punch he landed and part by the reality that is behind in this fight. Tell you who you like this round. I like Clark so far in this round. Man. First round. I'd love to see who the judges are giving it to. Just a little curious. Right hand from Clark after Boleto scores. All right. In the first seven rounds. He hurt Michael Clark in the eighth. Okay. The corner of Boleto said to him, you must get a knockout to win this fight. Let your hands go. The punch number is from round number nine. Again, Clark with the decided edge. He's had an edge in every round so far in the fight. Not a difficult recipe or a complicated recipe if Boleto is going to pick up a win here. He must simply let those hands go and hope they land enough before this three minutes has expired. He must not get tied up. That is not one of the ways you're going to land the punch. Not in a desperate situation like Boleto has found himself. So far through the first minute of the final round, it's Clark who has landed the meaningful punches. I just got a glimpse of an interesting punch that could be effective. You can see the overhand, hit, overhand right. It's a big telling punch for Boleto so far. That right uppercut could be very telling. We saw it earlier tonight, and I could see opportunities there. Boleto would let it go. The Clark will fall inside a little bit on the inside put his hands around Boleto. Then the corner of Boleto's been asking for that for about five I rounds. I think they're right to answer it. Now it's a matter of whether or not Boleto can heed their words and deliver it. See, that's the wrong time to throw it. Boleto must step back, allow Clark to fall into him. Clark has his arms on the outside of Boleto on the inside. He will leave himself vulnerable. And Boleto, right here, right here. Boleto can step back and throw that punch. He will land it. I believe. Let him out. Let him go. And Clark is sort of a delay mode here. He's going to let time trip off the clock, bleed the clock a little bit. He thinks he's ahead. Any way you stack it up, the two times that Boleto, or the two places that Boleto has the best chance to land is on the inside, and right here, when Clark goes back. <laughs> this is a bad place for Boleto on the rope. Not because of what the judges see and who's in control, but because he doesn't have room to punch. I got it, I got it, I got it. Punch. The clock is ticking. Mike. Clark's done a lot of punching and grabbing, although he's landed more punches here in the round. This has been a good fight, an intriguing fight. Anytime time you have an undefeated fighter that's in danger of losing that undefeated record, and he has power to turn it around. It's in two. Right, okay. There's All the right. bell to end it. Clark raises his hand in victory. Controlled this fight through the first seven. Boleto hurt Clark in the eighth, but did he give away too many rounds? His own corner said you dropped the first seven and needed a knockout. He didn't get the knockout. How the judges have it scored? We'll find out when we return to Friday Night Fight. Crew did a good job of decorating that scarecrow. Total punches, you see, 43% for Clark. He landed 41% of his power shots, 45% of his jab shots. Teddy Atlas's scorecard.
reads as follows, 97, 93 for Clark. I had it 98, 92 for Clark. For the judges' scorecards, we welcome in our ring announcer, Frank Carpano. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. Judge Don O'Neill scores at 99, 91. Judge Glenn Feldman scores at 98, 92. And Judge Don Ackerman scores at 97, 93. For the winner, Michael Clark. So Michael Clark wins the unanimous decision, and Teddy, the judges watch the fight as Clark did a little break dancing for us. Yeah, they did a good job. They even had him larger than I had it on tour of the park. So Michael Clark rejuvenates his career. In fact, during the commercial break, he thanks Vivian Harris for inspiring him. Now Gary Boletto adds his own gymnastics. Clark likes it. Clark likes the win as Boletto is head over heels about Michael Clark. Let's send it back to Brian and Max. All right, guys, thank you very much. Brian Max and Vivian Harris. Vivian, you ever you got you got a thing like that? You walk on your hands? You do anything nah, like nah, that? No. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> he has a win over Michael Clark, by the way. Vivian Harris, uh, you've probably seen him here before on Friday Night Fights. Uh, a classy, highly skilled boxer who comes off a tremendous win over Diabella Tartato, a two-round win. Did you surprise yourself how quickly you took him out, Vivian? No, I wasn't surprised. You know what I mean? Um, I thought the fight was going to go a little bit long, but I know, like, after the fourth round, I probably knocked him out, like, in the fifth, sixth, because, you know what I mean, after the fourth, you get tired. And, you know, what did you, you see know. in Hurtado that made you so confident going into the fight? Not that you're not always confident, but what specifically about Hurtado? Um, he can't fight going on the, um, the light side, I think. He can't, he can't, like... He can't fight he, going uh, counterclockwise. Right. When he goes that way, he don't throw no punch at all, so I try to cut him off. You know what I mean? When I cut him off, that's how I caught him. Well, let's take a look now. We'll go back. It, it didn't take long. Two rounds. Uh, Vivian Harris against Diabella Sortado over the weekend at the...